you tell us a little bit about your globe trotting and the mission behind Social Media Club and what you guys are up to? Well, actually, you know, we announced, or I announced other Social Media Club here at Nomex last year. I got up on stage just like many other people at the end of the day with a little announcement. And uh, about a month and a half after that, I took off and went to London, New York, Miami, Orlando, back to San Francisco, down to LA, and, and we held a bunch of round tables talking about social media. So we brought in the bloggers, and podcasters, video bloggers, PR people, marketing people, journalists, and the idea really is to bring all these different people together who have an interest in social media, to so learn from one another, and to really kind of push forward on some ethical issues and start establishing some standards and practices and to learn from one another. And that really is the root of it. And, uh, you know, now we've got 18 or 19 clubs going in different cities. A bunch of other people starting to do little things like geek dinners just to get it away in other cities like Paris and Berlin. So it's gone global. It's, you know, a very interesting thing right now. It's been an interesting year, difficult and challenging. Uh, but it continues to grow. And in fact, I keep running into people who are like, oh, yeah, I know that social media is thing. I've been... So that's a really nice part of it when you see a good thing. So in the middle of all this, you got married. Is that correct? Yes. Just a month ago, actually, I'm one of the 777 mass or whatever that is called. Now, you guys aren't going to take some pudding and wear some Nikes at some point in the future, are you? <laughs> no, you mean our purple Nikes, you mean? The purple Nikes? The purple Nikes are very nice. They look good. But no, no culting. Uh, not, not in my foreseeable future. Uh, it's really about uh, real people, you know, and we really are transforming the business. Step Schultz talks a lot about the relationship economy. I don't know if you've seen any of your presentations on it, but they're you know, really bright and insightful. And I think that fundamentally social media does change the way that companies relate to their markets, but more importantly, the way they relate to people. And it's this humanization of business that is actually at the root of what's happening and why I think it's so important to make sure it's done right. It's very easily corrupted by bad intentions or by people who want to exploit it. And uh, you know, we want to make sure that the heart remains in what we do. Yeah, I, I recently did something on Facebook where Shlomo Rabinowitz received a, a shuttle, which is a video okay. editing tool. And uh, he, he, he got it for his birthday. He talked about it on a little post he did to Facebook. And within like five minutes of seeing that video on Facebook, I went and bought one of those shuttles. And I, I, it kind of dawned on me a couple of days later, I'm like, this is the reputation economy in effect. And so I did a little Facebook video back you know, commenting on it. It's just amazing how these tools are allowing us to, you know, a lot of people say about how, you know, well, you're standing in front of a computer, you're not disconnecting. But the one thing I love about, you know, what you're doing is that you're trying to get people physically together as well as oh, virtually. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think what you're seeing is a lot of... Uh, People actually coming out from behind the computer because they are introduced to all these people going, I want to see who's behind this avatar in Second Life or who's behind this you know, MySpace profile or Facebook profile or whatever. So what, what have you seen uh, in the aspect of bringing people out of their shells? Well, there's an interesting like Uber trend you're actually hitting here, which is um, that John Naismith talks about in Megatrends, about the more digital become, we become, the more we'll crave physical stuff. And um, I think that's a part of it. We spent so many years during the dot-com era behind our computers, but now there's this craving for personal interaction. And we see this also as well with the free agent movement. Well, everyone went to be a free agent because they couldn't stand all the assholes they were working with. And now it's come to this point where like, wait, I'm missing the social interaction. Wait, I'm missing the feedback. So now co-working has arisen. That's actually another manifestation of it. But really, to get to your point in, in terms of seeing people coming together, it's just happening everywhere. I mean, you've got the craft bloggers, right? And one of their main things is getting together to show each other how they do a certain knot or a stitch or how they make something work. And you just can't, you know, video is a great training tool and a way to distribute knowledge and learning. But there's nothing about, there's nothing like turning to something and having this physical interaction to build the trust that's at the heart of it. And I, you know Shlomo before you oh, saw yeah. the video, right? Oh, yeah. So it was because of that, at maybe an event like this or somewhere else, where you met him and you were able to say, I trust this person. Yes. And you build that trust and, and in two minutes together, after having read all of your stuff online and having seen your videos and doing this, I felt like I knew you. But when I met you, I knew you. It clicked. It, there was that visceral interaction 
with you that made this a real thing for me. Yeah. It brought it into my physical space and created that. And I think that's from the from the social media aspect of what you're doing with the clubs around the world. I think that's the amazing part is that actually you know getting people from behind the computer and in front of each other, even if they're sitting in the same room behind a computer, they're at least in the same room and and, and looking each other in the eye. Well, before we got into a big fight about what is social media and the meaning and the definition of it, I used to tell people that lunch was a form of social media because it's this, it's this mediation space where we actually have a chance to be social. Um, but now as we've matured our definition of it a little bit more, what social media really means is about socializing media. It's about the ability to share it. It's about the ability to build upon it. It's about the ability to have it be a artifact that we can interact around and, and come together with. And there's many different forms of it, the social software and all sorts of pieces to it, but um, that's really the best kind of broad definition we've found. So what's the most innovative thing you've seen in globetrotting that's being done out there in the social space? You know, that's an interesting question. Um, I really, you know, first of all, I think that the best, or the most innovation these days is actually a UI innovation. It's about a user interface more than it is about deep technology. Because there comes a point where average everyday people just need access to information. And so things I think that are exciting to me are new ways of discoverability. So recently at WordCamp, um, Roshmi actually did a great presentation on designing for social software and designing for popularity. And, and she actually did a research experiment where she had an alpha group and a beta group. And with the alpha group, she let them see what everyone else was downloading in terms of what was the most popular downloads. And I think it was around music, right? So it was common titles, music titles. And then the other group, she didn't let them see what other people were downloading. And if you expect Rolling Stone and traditional music stuff to actually be true in the way it is, that music that's good will bubble up, um, that was a different result than what you got. In, in the stuff where they were exposing what other people were downloading, they found that, that certain titles accelerated and became very popular. And the group where you couldn't see, it was very much random. And the chart in terms of distribution and downloads was all over the place. So it really made me think about it a lot differently. And some of the things she's done with slideshare.net, I think are very innovative in terms of how to think about creating this discoverability that's an important part of social networks. So changing gears a little bit, from a, from a psychological aspect, have you seen from your experience from being around a lot more of these than probably anybody else in this spectrum, a, a change in an understanding from people that are that are using these social tools, and you know, I'm going to refer to the live streaming and some of the stuff that's gone on here specifically about how this is really changing people uh, it, on a psychological sense and how they understand and interact with the world, bringing themselves open and exposing themselves so much. It, is it changing us as human beings, or is it just exposing the old? If you went out and got drunk in the little old town of Guthrie, Oklahoma, and you tipped old, little, old little little lady, little O'Leary, <laughs> little lady O'Leary's cow over, everybody in the town knew about it. Is that is that the kind of experience that you're seeing? You know, that's interesting. Well, those are two different questions. I think they're both good questions, um, and, and something I haven't had anyone ask me in a while. Um, you know, I think that uh, earlier today, Keith Tier had a comment. Keith from Edgeham had a comment about this during Vanessa Fox's session that I think was right on. Um, it comes to this point of fear. Uh, that I'm fearful of this. And, and I had a specific thing and I didn't get to speak in the room at the time, but going away for the wedding, I had basically advertised for months that I wasn't going to be home for 12 days. And you know what? I, and there was something that happened that was a little weird and I won't get into the whole story, but somebody said something one night, not anyone we would know or anything, somebody in our personal circle. And I just had this feeling like, you know what? They might break in. Like, knowing we're away. So we actually went out and got an alarm two days the house alarm two days before we left. So all of a sudden, I didn't have that sense of fear. It changed the way that I had behavior. Why? Because I'm living my life online. You know, if you looked hard, you'd find my address. It's not, you know, right. hidden anywhere. I'm not uber private. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to be in fear, so I am living my life publicly. I am sharing this stuff digitally, and people know who I am, what I stand for, the fact that I get drunk every now and then, and, you know, who I am. So um, it is changing us, but I don't know that we know 
know how yet. I think well, that's still to be seen. And I'm afraid that incidents like Kathy Sierra and some of these other little things are planting these seeds of fear of how much we can live ourselves out and, and how we actually interact with each other. Um, but at the end of the day, bringing people together in front of one another, I think, builds more trust. One of the reasons behind my thinking and this stuff when I started doing the brain jams before social media came in this was actually a friend of mine um, who was a homophobe, to put it simply. He just couldn't stand being around homosexuals. He just his thing, the way his dad brought him up, whatever it was. And in South Beach, there was a lot of gay men around and friends of mine and business with, and it was natural and just no big deal. Um, but one night we all went out and uh, we were having this great time. And this gentleman who was with us, who was gay, was just like said something really, really funny. But my buddy, who was a homophobe, all of a sudden like, what? You're not fucking gay? What are you talking about? And he was like, really, like put back. But then all of a sudden he found out like, yes, he was. But because he had seen him as a person instead of as the label or the stereotype or whatever, it didn't matter anymore. So in fact, his his homophobia was actually chipped away because he saw the person, not the stereotype. So behind a lot of the stuff I'm doing to try to bring people together in person is that ability to see people as they are instead of as a culture or the stereotype and to get people to actually meet each other as you know humans. So I'm hopeful that what we're doing here leads to more of that and more of those opportunities for us to not see the differences that separate us but the commonalities that really bring us together. Excellent. Well, I, I'll let you get back to the party. I appreciate your thank time you. and thank you so oh, much you, for being John. here. Good to see you. And uh, what Chris is doing, socialmediaclub.org is where he's at and you can check that out. We have a, a chapter in Portland which uh, we're involved with somewhat. Good stuff. Uh, actually quite a bit. Um, but uh, it's been a great experience for us and I love connecting with people like Chris. Well, thank you so much, John. Thanks for keeping Portland going. It's been a lot of fun up here. Right. We'll get to come up for the next one hopefully sometime soon. I'm hoping. Yes. Take care.